Good day, everyone. Welcome back to our show. I pray that God will give us wisdom once again to have a productive learning experience here at Vet Talks with Doc Athena. Good morning. Our lesson for today is brucellosis. So this presentation is a guide for animal racers, students of veterinary medicine and animal science, or basically anyone interested. So what is brucellosis? If you navigate in the website of OIE or the World Organization for Animal Health, they define brucellosis as a contagious disease of livestock with significant economic impact. Oh, why? Now, let's try to see or find out what causes the disease brucellosis. This is caused by a pathogenic bacteria from the genus Brucella. Let's try to profile the culprit. Brucella is a small, gram-negative, aerobic, facultative, cocobacilli, non-motile, and non-spore-forming, intracellular within the host, meaning if the bacteria is inside the host, this bacteria resides inside the host's cells. You might ask, Doc, does it survive then outside the host? Yes, this bacteria has a characteristic of environmental persistence outside the host. So they could still live even outside the host. What is a host? So a host is a living organism that is being targeted by these parasites called bacteria so that they could live. So what are the species that could be a target or that could be affected? The highest cases recorded of brucellosis are in cattle. They were also reported in swine, sheep, goats, camels, equines, dogs, other ruminants, some marine mammals, and humans. Is it not advisable to go swimming in places where there are reported cases of brucellosis in marine mammals? Later, we will answer that because that is of public health concern. And as I've mentioned, public health, it does infect humans. And as you can see in the presentation, this is highlighted in red color. More about this bacteria, Brucella is almost species specific, but contamination across species is still possible. And yes, there were reports of cross contamination. Brucella abortus usually occurs in cattle. Brucella militensis were reported in sheep and goats. Brucella ovis were reported in sheep. Brucella suvis were reported in swine. And Brucella canis were reported in dogs. On the left side of this presentation, you can see some photos. On the upper part, this is an image of Brucella melitensis under scanning electron microscope taken by Dennis Kuntel. So you see, they are coco bacilli. Coco because uh, from cocos, which is usually round or circular, but bacilli, usually these are elongated. But since this bacteria cannot be identified as coccus or bacillus, they are generally called as cocobacilli, one of the cocobacilli-shaped bacteria. Also, you could see it on the lower left of the presentation, another image of Brucella taken from iStock photo 
for the purpose of presentation. You might ask, Doc, you mentioned about infections in different species. Well, yes, if you will just try to make your own research, there are many published scientific studies, very rich information in the internet. Just to give you some samples of these studies of scientists, here are some. Here you can see brucella infection in marine mammals. Yes, there are cases. Another one, I saw this in the website of NOAA or NOAA Fisheries. And they had a discussion about brucella infection in marine mammals. Another here is a published article from Veterinary Research. As you can see in the caption of the photo, a review of brucella infection in marine mammals with special emphasis on brucella pinipigialis in the hooded seal or Cytosphora cristata. And here, we also have a study entitled The Diagnosis of Brucellosis in Sheep and Goats old and new tools. This was published in Small Ruminant Research available in sciencedirect.com. Another one here from a journal, Preventive Veterinary Medicine. There's a study entitled Brucellosis in Working Equines of Cattle Farms from Minas Gerais State, Brazil. Next is a brucellosis in dogs and public health risk. As you know, dogs are man's best friend. So dogs could be infected by brucella as well. And usually it's the brucella canis. And one more here, brucellosis in camels. Now let's look at the transmission. How is brucella transmitted from different species or from one species to another? Let us try to know. Where are they? Where do they reside? How do we get infected? Brucella are found in blood, urine, milk, and semen of infected host or animal. Also, when they contaminate their environment, they can be found in water, aborted fetuses from infected animal, manure, wool, hay, equipment, and clothes. How do they survive? The bacteria can survive outside the animal for several months given a favorable condition. So we mentioned a while ago that they are environmentally persistent. How? Well, when they have a favorable environment and that is in places that are cool and moist or if there is a high humidity, low temperature without sunlight. Take note without sunlight so that's a big factor about their survival now that's a key word for us to know how do we kill them one good news about this bacteria is several hours of exposure to direct sunlight can kill brucella it was a bad news that they could still survive outside the host but it is also a good news that they can be killed by direct exposure to sunlight for several hours. Now, how do we get infected? We already know where they can be found. How do they travel to reach us? Or how do they travel from one host or from one place to another infecting another host? This transmission is made through contact with secretions from infected animal. What secretions? Reproductive secretion such as from fetus or placenta, and it could be mammary secretion such as milk. There are three ways that were identified by researchers based on our references on how transmission occurs in brucellosis. First is ingestion, second is penetration, and third is artificial insemination. First, ingestion. So the animal could ingest the organism, okay, live organism from aborted fetuses, fetal membranes, uterine discharges. 
So imagine if your herd are just in the pasture and one of the animals that gave birth was actually brucella positive and another healthy animal from that herd when a curious animal checked an aborted fetus and licked that fetus because of hunger or for whatever reason, that healthy animal could already be infected with brucella. Another way could be ingestion of contaminated feed and water. And lastly, ingestion of organism by licking contaminated genitals of other animals. That's one way, ingestion. Another is by penetration through mucous membranes, conjunctiva, wounds, or intact skin in both people and animals. You might say that I didn't eat anything that is brucella positive. Yes, you may not have ingested anything from an animal that is brucella positive, but maybe you had a direct contact. Like what? Maybe your water in a bucket that was licked by a brucella positive animal? That water is already contaminated with brucella. You didn't know it and you tried to wash your hands using that contaminated water. So that's how you got infected because the brucella could penetrate through the intact skin. That is just one way. And last one is through artificial insemination. Contaminated semen is deposited in the uterus. So you might say, Doc, no, my farm is clear from brucella testing. I just had it a week ago. All right. So your farm is free from brucella or from brucellosis based on the tests that were conducted a few weeks ago. But sir, did you just have breeding for the last two days or for the last three days? Oh, yeah. Through what? Is it natural mating? Oh no, I had AI technician who did the artificial breeding because I want to improve my stocks and so I bought lines to improve the genetics of my farm. Maybe the semen is uh, brucella negative, but how about the equipments that your technician used? Or maybe the equipments or the tools that were used during artificial insemination were sterilized. But how about the semen? Is it from a brucella negative farm? Or maybe the handling of the semen? How was it? So these are some of the things that you should consider to find out how brucellosis entered your farm. Or how did brucella able to enter or contaminate your farm? Or your animals? Maybe dogs, you know, when you walk your dogs in the park and you don't know if the other dogs in that park are brucella negative or positive. And then you let the dog play with another dog, which you are not aware if it is a carrier of brucella. So these are some of the factors that you would like to look at or consider how brucella transmitted from one animal to another or even humans. Okay, so on the next slide, you can see here a very simple illustration from clubofmozambique.com for illustration purposes. Here, you could see different species of animals. How do they infect the humans? Eating of infected pork. How about with dogs? Maybe playing with the infected dogs. You know, dogs, they like to lick you in the face and they like playing with you. And that includes licking sometimes, right? And you don't know if they are actually carrier of brucella. Here, goats and sheep. Goats also like to lick, petting them. Or maybe you eat a raw meat of this infected animal. They are food animal, remember? This um, small ruminants, large ruminants, the cattle, and also the swine, these are food animals. And if you eat them raw without knowing that the source of your meat is actually brucella positive, and you ate that undercooked or raw, then you could be infected with uh, brucella. Okay, doc, so that's how brucella is transmitted. Now, how do we know if our animal is already infected with brucella? What are the clinical signs that we could observe from our animal to know or to suspect that they've been infected with brucella or they are suffering from brucellosis? So these are the clinical signs. More often than not, there's abortion, usually a late stage abortion. Infertility is also observed. Sterility is stillborn, weak young. It could be a weak kid, weak calf, weak clump, weak puppy, weak piglet. And there could be a retained placenta. Mastitis could also be observed. 
And of course, if there's mastitis, there is a reduced milk yield. In males, uh, there could be a swollen testicles as shown in the figures on the left. And if there's fever or ongoing inflammation of the testicles, then it could be orchitis. Other cases would present testicular abscesses. And in some cases, there's arthritis. I am not saying that when you see at least one of these clinical signs, you should suspect brucellosis. Often than not, what I do in a farm is when I'm presented with a case, the most common problem presented would be swollen testicles. So I get the rectal temperature, of course. The personnel should be wearing gloves when they take uh, body temperature of suspected cases of brucellosis. In any case, in a farm or a clinical case, you should be wearing gloves to protect yourself from infection. If you see at least two of these signs in your farm, my advice is that you consider brucellosis testing. You should include brucellosis in your differential diagnosis when you see at least two of these clinical signs. Most cases that I handled, there is orchitis and arthritis. And usually, I suggest brucellosis testing. So these are just videos of animals in a farm that I visited and um, as you can see here there is orchitis or swollen testicles this patient was also febrile so there's a high temperature and the other one here as you can see there is also uh, swollen testicles and at the same time arthritis actually uh, this ram had been running on its knees so it's very painful so now that we suspect brucellosis in our farm how do we know or how do we find out that it's actually brucellosis so how do we diagnose it there are three levels of diagnosis well first if you observe the clinical signs that we just mentioned next is your veterinarian would request for a laboratory testing and in the lab they could do agglutination test and here the lab samples that you could submit would be milk semen or whey wherein they will check the antibodies in these samples or they could do ELISA or the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay wherein they will check the antibodies in milk and blood serum. However, the problem with these tests is that they could still give false positive or false negative results. So how do we confirm? The confirmatory or definitive diagnosis of brucellosis is through bacterial isolation and identification because by that, we're sure that the bacteria is actually in the samples submitted. In a study by Hoister et al., which was published in the Opera Veterinary Science Journal in 2010, they evaluated the different ways for diagnosis of brucellosis. And in their summary, they stated that the only finite diagnosis is the recovery of the causative agent from the host. So this is what I was talking about. You could only say that it's actually a case of brucellosis if you were able to isolate the bacteria. And of course, properly identified it as brucella based on on lab tests okay so now it is confirmed that it's brucellosis what shall we do is there a treatment unfortunately it's actually very impractical to treat brucellosis and according to experts from goatsextension.org there is no practical treatment that is successful long-term antibiotic treatment can eliminate brucella ovis infections in valuable rams but the fertility may remain poor. This is again a bad news. Is there a hope? Well, based on our references, yes. And if you will do your own research, you would know that there is a possibility for treating the animal. However, you have to weigh in the risks, the economic risks and also public health risks. So you have to consult your veterinarian and discuss possibilities and risks of long-term treatment with combined antibiotics. Biotics. So, based on studies, there were good combinations or combo of antibiotics that were able to successfully eliminate or treat brucellosis in their cases. However, you have to discuss as well the status of antibiotic resistance in your herd because you have to make sure that your herd has no resistance to the antibiotics that you're going to use for your treatment. And if ever you're going to use a long-term treatment of combined antibiotics, you have to discuss also the possibility of 
creating resistance for your future herd. And with that, using antibiotics, you have to discuss the withdrawal period, okay? So it's very expensive, very tedious, and the treatment has no guarantee if, you know, it could save my livestock or my farm. Is there a way to prevent it? What's the prevention? There are only two ways of prevention for brucellosis. And luckily, yes, there is a vaccine for this, but you have to check in your country if there is a registered, legally registered vaccines available in your country. So the prevention and control is through vaccination and, of course, is strict implementation of biosecurity. How about public health concern? Yes, as we mentioned, this is a zoonotic disease. If you will check the website of WHO or World Health Organization, they stated there that brucellosis is one of the most widespread zoonoses transmitted by animals. And in endemic areas, human brucellosis has serious public health consequences. Expansion of animal industries and urbanization and the lack of hygienic measures in animal husbandry and in food handling partly account for brucellosis remaining a public health hazard. So you see, it should be a joint effort between the farms from farm to table as most of the zoonotic diseases that we encounter. This is part of one health, which means from the production in the farm until it reaches the table of the consumers, we have to ensure hygienic measures were observed. So how does zoonotic transmission occur? A while ago, for animals, we mentioned that there are three ways, ingestion, penetration, and artificial insemination. Now, from animals to humans, According to CDC, or the Center for Disease Control, this is through ingestion, inhalation, and penetration. Ingestion, through eating of undercooked meat or consuming unpasteurized or raw dairy products. Okay, so it's very important that we pasteurize it to at least kill any bacteria in that dairy product. Second, inhalation. This is very terrible. Why? Because there's a possibility of breathing in the bacteria. How? Usually, the lab technicians, the veterinarians who actually have direct contact with pure brucella isolates and also those who work in abattoir. That's why they have to practice their food hygiene and they have to make sure that they protect themselves as well from possible transmission of this disease. And one more way of zoonotic transmission is penetration, which we previously mentioned already. How? By bacteria entering the body through skin wounds or mucous membranes. The same way from, uh, the same way with animal to animal transmission. So, for summary, brucellosis is a bacterial disease that is caused by the pathogenic brucella. Genus Brucella. So there are many other species under the genus Brucella. And it usually presents reproductive clinical signs. Confirmatory diagnosis is by bacterial isolation and identification. Treatment is possible with long term combination of antibiotics. And prevention is done through vaccination and biosecurity. And very important of public health concern, this is zoonotic. So that's all, folks. I hope you learned something from today's discussion. And for references, here they are. If you would like to have a copy of the published articles that I showed you a while ago, you could check them out in the internet. Or if you can find them, you could send me a message and I could give you a PDF copy of it if I have one. Thank you, and I hope to see you again in our next lesson. Bye! Thank you for being with us in this episode of Vet Talks with Doc Athena. For those who have not yet subscribed our YouTube channel, please do so. 
Did you learn something from this lecture? If yes, please hit the like button. If you want to be a part of our social media community and always updated of our new posts or to talk to me directly, you may do so by following our Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Again, thank you very much. Please keep safe everyone. God bless us all and I hope to see you again in our next lecture. This is Doc Athena, your country vet.